The main misconception I want to tackle is the belief that going clean and green is difficult. But it's actually not as inconvenient as people think it is. Hey Tribe, Stephanie Dixon here for Green is the New Black TV, your guide to conscious living in Asia. Today we are shooting in Singapore with the lovely Min Chan, founder of Puritsi. Thank you so much for joining us, Min. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about your journey and how you really started by launching a e-commerce e platform uh, with all these amazing products. I think I started out with the mentality that everything that is made for consumers is meant for consumers and it's safe for consumers is good for you right you just you just take it as a given because why would you be manufacturing unsafe things mm. or or things that are harmful to your health and that is just not true <laughs> so um what i was learning from um people who whose eyes were open and what i was reading about just made me realize that even if you look at the so-called green products, um, the safe and non-toxic products, the eco-friendly products, there is actually a lot of greenwashing. So, um, you know, what the label says doesn't really necessarily mean what it is. And so a lot of the time was spent looking for the products that really supported that. So it wasn't just a product for the, uh, made in a safe material for the sake of it, but it had to be something that worked mm. in my life. So of course this then would have extended you know, to your little boy wanting to ensure that you had practical but safe products for him. So how did you really discover these products and how do you test them? Because on your website you say they are clean and green and tested. So what does that process look like? I was out there searching high and low for the kind of products that I needed to get for him. I would be there um, educating myself about the science, um, reading the product labels, um, asking questions, talking to the manufacturers, and reading all the blog articles out there to really decide for myself which were the products that you know were worth my time. So I realized I was sitting on it trove of information that surely someone else could benefit from. So the immediately the next idea was just why not just have a shop in Singapore? Stocked with the same products that I worked so hard to find mm. and that I know now, you know, is something that I trust to use on my child, in my family, in my home, and that actually works. Yeah. And Purity was born. That's amazing. So what were some of the most interesting things you've learned along this journey or any misconceptions that you kind of want to bust or myths that you've come across or anything like that? Misconceptions, so definitely. Um, I think the main misconception I want to tackle is the belief that going clean and green is difficult. But it's actually not as inconvenient as people think it is. Product technology has moved on a lot from mm -hmm. say our parents' times and, and, and they suffered through it without, without, without a word to complain. But now we have things that not only allow us to reduce our parenting eco footprint, but also to fit into our busy lifestyles. Mm. And that's what I really want to tell people. Just a few changes. Um, taking minimal effort on your part can really make a big difference in the way we are treating Mother Earth, in the way we are treating our bodies and the bodies of our children and our families. The yeah. yeah, so Obviously, a big part of what we do at Green and New Black is taking little green steps. So what are some of these easy things that you would recommend people to do in order to live a cleaner and greener life for them and their children? Buy less than you think you need. So I know your friends kind of call you like a modern day hippie, which I think is really funny because looking at you, I wouldn't have said that you were necessarily a hippie, which I think is quite a common you know, thing that people talk about and is thrown around now still. But how do you think we can shake this idea of sustainable living equals hippie. You know, what do we have to change and how can we really push that? Because I think nowadays it's a choice and it's it's a way that you live um, versus 
being something that's hippie. <laughs> You know, sure, at first you feel a bit lonely, you know, trying to share with people why it's important to you to go green. And, um, but just keep talking, keep telling, keep sharing, keep asking, and you'll be surprised how quickly people cotton on and how quickly things change for the better. Mm. So we just have to keep soldiering on. Yes, keep <laughs> soldiering on. Fight the good fight. <laughs> um, so what would Mother Nature say if she could speak right now? I think she would tell us, remember, you are nothing without me. I don't need you. I don't depend on you. But the same cannot be said the other way around. Mm. And if we don't start realizing the price that we are going to pay, the price that we are already paying um, for our actions, you know, at the end of the day, we are the ones who suffer the consequences. Mm. And Mother Nature will just persist. That's really powerful. Thank you. And thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> and thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today so that you can live more consciously tomorrow.